I feel that if we can teach children to be kind young and they'll grow up to be kind adults. I, and this is especially a time now in this pandemic where there needs to be more kindness and understanding. And if kids can see that our differences don't matter, no matter what that difference is, as adults, we also should realize that our differences don't matter. Johnny Gardner here with the Boston Terrier Society. Today I have a special guest with us. She's actually the author of a children's book and have it right here. Some dogs are different. Michelle Pendergrass. She came in here today to actually talk about her book, how she got started, and give us a little taste of what she's working on next. Without further ado, Michelle, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your book and kind of what made you want to write this. I'm Michelle Pendergrass. I have a three-legged Boston Terrier named Murphy. We bring Murphy a lot of places. And most of the time when I would go to soccer games, I would hear people say, what's wrong with that dog? You know, it would be adults asking, kids asking. Sometimes they would come up and ask. And every time people asked that, it made me think that it would be a great idea to write a book so that people could read about Murphy and then when they see something that's different instead of thinking what's wrong they can say look at how awesome that dog is and then relating the dog situation to to people because I that's one thing that really made me think about is people look at dogs that have physical disabilities or disabilities um, that they're also thinking that people that are different that you know just but nothing, everything is, is um, everybody belongs. Right. Know? Yeah. So I, my two and a half year old, you were nice enough to send me this book and everything. I really appreciate that. And I read it to her. I think kids can relate to dogs and animals a little bit better. I have no psychology background or whatnot, but <laughs> this is my personal <laughs> opinion. I think they can connect better with the animals because they're used to them. Like Bella, she already teaches her to set and everything. My daughter, Sophia, does. So seeing a different dog, they're able to possibly, hopefully, correlate that into a kid with a disability that they're not going to understand a kid missing a leg necessarily. Right. Absolutely. And that's what I hope is that the book is a tool for conversations like that. So the, you know, it's a very short book. It's less than 400 words, but it can start very important conversations about um, differences and that we all belong. There's one little girl, the grandmother bought it for her granddaughter mm -hmm. who can't hear and the granddaughter who can't hear, I believe she's around eight years old, was reading it to her hearing brother. And she got to um, Peppermint Patty, who in the book also cannot hear. And she was reading to him, got to that page and said, oh, just like me. So uh -huh. it's nice for them to see that, you know, they're not alone. You know, look what this dog can do. Don't give up. Lots of messages from the book that depending on the age, you can talk about after you're done with with the book. Right. Yeah, absolutely. As far as Murphy, so how did he end up, you know, becoming a three-legged dog? So I worked at a veterinary hospital for 13 years mm -hmm. and love Boston Terriers, Bulldogs, any squished face dog. And a breeder brought in Murphy at six months old with a broken leg and said that they didn't want him. They gave him to the vet and just said, euthanize him, which of course they were not going to do. So everybody's calling me come, come meet this dog. He has a broken leg. He needs a, a new home. And my husband said, do not, we had young kids at this time. So do not uh -huh. meet a puppy that has a broken leg. So I didn't go meet Murphy, but they had fixed his leg. So I just went to go visit him when he was in recovery. Um, and I left him. He was uh -huh. so cute. It was love at first sight. So we brought Murphy home. He became part of our family. And the orthopedic surgeon said, he's, his joints are so bad in his right leg, you will someday um, have to amputate it. And he mm -hmm. rebroke it about eight months later, jumping from the couch. It's been six years, over six years that he's had three mm -hmm. legs. And it's, it's the best thing for him. When he did have four legs, he was always limping on that leg. Mm, that's true. Mm -hmm. So I love to tell kids that when they ask what's wrong, you know, nothing is wrong. He is so much better with three legs. Um, he gets around great. 
Mm -hmm. As far as his other joints, are those fine? I mean, is there a risk of those being? They, they x-rayed his left leg and everything was fine. Um, Murphy's eight, so, mm -hmm. well, he's going to be eight years old. The older he gets, I'll probably put him on some joint supplements soon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he doesn't hike with us as much as he used to, even though he loves it. I just want to be really careful that, you know, as he gets older, it stays healthy. Yeah. My uh, in-laws, they had a three-legged dog. Well, obviously, it was born with four legs. It was an older, uh, it was a, I don't remember what it was. It was one of the little, like a basset hound, basically. Oh. And it ended up living, a, I mean, it was already over 10 years old whenever it had lost a leg. It had oh. lived with three legs, I think, for four years. I love when kids come up and ask, though, what happened to your dog? And, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I can tell them the story. And um, Murphy knows I'm talking about him right now. He keeps mm -hmm. looking over at me. Do you want to grab Murphy? And sure. So mm -hmm. this is Murphy. Love the bow tie. He's got a bow tie. He, he used to be a therapy dog. When I wasn't as busy with work, um, we would go once a week to a nursing home. And when he had his bow tie on, he would know kind of that he was working and that's where we were going and mm -hmm. he brought lots of smiles to people there yeah that's awesome yeah. is that how Murphy met Peppermint how did that come into play with all of his friends that are in the book so the bulldog Habernash they were a client at the vet where I worked so um, we were kind of his second home his mom traveled a lot for work so mm -hmm. Habernash would come stay with us all the time and then the other two dogs we met on Instagram um, I oh. follow so many dogs on Instagram. It's kind of, you know, Ellen and then a lot of dogs. <laughs> but funny. I I got in touch with both of the owners of Peppermint Patty um, and Stevie and instantly they were both so excited to have their dogs be part of this and um, mm -hmm. help, help show kids, um, you know, that these dogs are wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so as far as the book and everything, I, I know you go to schools and read about you know, read your book there. Do the other dogs come with you? Does Murphy come along with you to those readings? So Murphy comes with me. Um, mm -hmm. And then two dogs live in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then one lives in Missouri. So Murphy comes with me, um, which the schools, it's really hard, at least here, to have dogs get into schools. Like my kids' elementary school, there hasn't been a dog in that school in 10 years. And when I told them the story, they saw the book, they instantly let Murphy in and he was a, a, a big hit. Yeah. So. Well, as far as like meeting new people, like, okay, so you, the book had come out in October, correct? Yes, yeah, end of October. What's been your, I mean, most interesting experience from it that you weren't expecting after writing a children's book? Um. I get a lot. So my husband will come. I, I have a desk upstairs in the living room and in the mornings mm -hmm. I'll have coffee and I'll just start crying. He's like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Like, what did I do? Um, <laughs> it's, I get these, these emails and thank you cards and letters from, from people, from kids. Kids have written thank you cards of how much they love the book. Um, it's just, just nothing that I expected. You know, I was yeah. excited to write this book, but it, I think it's touched a lot more people than, than I had thought. And it just, it feels good. It makes me cry in a, yeah. in a happy way. So um, as far as wanting to do other books, I'm sure that motivates you to like go big and go crazy. Like what else do you have kind of in your head at this point? So I would love to do another book someday. Um, I've thought about doing a book, something related to how dogs just aren't here with us long enough but that when they're gone you know that there's some in a good happy place and but right now it's more you know I can't wait to get back out and get back in the schools and read to more kids. As far as be, people being able to find you and everything do you do any type of like reading at um, bookstores or libraries or is it just exclusively schools at this point? So I have, I've read for, um, I did read at a little bookstore, Inkberry, that's local. I was going to go to the library actually right before this closed because they have great summer programs of oh, authors mm -hmm. coming to read. So I hope to do that. I read for a Boy Scout troop on a Zoom, which was, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would love to go anywhere. We've got a humane society that they do a lot of fundraisers. So I hope in September uh, to, do, to do that. 
as far as people being able to reach out to you, maybe there's like a teacher listening, you know, and would appreciate you coming in to read to their students. Where could someone find you and Murphy? So we have a Facebook page for Some Dogs Are Different. I've got a Twitter account. If you go on somedogsaredifferent.com, mm -hmm. that has a little message spot. So you can just message me there and that will go straight to my email. Mm -hmm. Lots of ways to find me and I would love, I'm going to actually try to do a, a video of me reading the book soon. So I would love to be able to send that to anybody who would like that. Okay. Yeah. And once you have something like that, let me know and I'll be sure to include it in the show notes. So anybody listening now, they could go ahead and just click that link to, to find that reading. Or is anything else that you're wanting to try to achieve with this book? Um, it was kind of an open, wide question. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, I, more messages from this book is just really teaching kids to be kind. Um, okay. I think Thanks the Ellen following Ellen. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because that was one of my main messages. And then she had the whole thing of her and sitting next to George Bush and it was talking about her differences don't matter and we just need to be kind to everyone. And I was so excited. So uh -huh. that is the idea of my book. And I feel that if we can teach children to be kind young and they'll grow up to be kind adults. I, and this is especially a time now in this pandemic where there needs to be more kindness and understanding. And if kids can see that our differences don't matter, no matter what that difference is, as adults, we also should realize that our differences don't matter, whether it's you know, religion, politics, what, whatever it is, you know, right. get along and be kind to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great message and a really important message, especially now with everything that's going on, politics, pandemic, you name it. Right. Um, you just give people like a little taste of the book, maybe you read a, a passage from it. Absolutely. The dog really is um, four dogs with disabilities showing, you know, that they want to do everything that other dogs do. The pictures really tell a lot of the story. The, the pictures are all real, real photographs that I just changed on an app. Mm -hmm. But the, the book ends, and I'll show you Here's one of the pictures. These are my friends. We are different from each other and special in our own way. We don't let our differences stop us from trying anything. When you see things that are different, remember our stories and how great it is to be one, one of a kind. Some dogs are different and we all want to be loved. That's great. Well, Michelle, I really appreciate your time and coming on uh, to this channel and sharing your book. I think it's a really great message, especially in today's age. I look forward to seeing more videos come out from you as well as more books in the future. So thank you so much for coming on today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to learn more about Boston Terriers, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're coming out with new content all the time. As far as being able to find Michelle's book, check out the show notes below, and you'll find a link to her website where you can purchase her book, as well as her Instagram account and Facebook account. So thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys later in the next show. Thanks. Bye.